All right, so this is uh, our health class lesson two called My Plate Guide. So it's a guide to help you have a healthy diet. Eating right, okay? So previously we talked about nutrients and that we have to consume nutrients in order to keep our body healthy and so that it can carry out our normal processes. Um, we have to uh, be eating healthy things so that we have optimal performance, just like we talked about with a car or any type of engine, if you put crappy fuel or crappy oil in it, you're not going to get good performance. So with our bodies, if we don't put the appropriate fuel in it, um, we're not going to have good performance. Um, how do you know what to eat and how much to eat? Well, we're going to talk about that today. And just as a review, how many different nutrient groups do we have? We talked about this last time in lesson one. And it's six. All right, so let's list them very quickly. So we have the carbohydrate nutrient, fat, protein, vitamins, minerals, and the most important one is water. So perhaps this looks familiar to you. This is the food pyramid. Um, this is what the um, USDA decided was a good way for people to look at different food groups and see how much they should be getting. Well, I have news for you. They no longer use this pyramid. It's changed. They now use... <laughs> they now use a plate, okay? Which kind of makes sense because if you have good manners, you are eating off a plate. Um, and it divides our plate up into different sections. And each section um, shows the proportion with which um, you should be consuming our five major food groups. So again, each section represents the amount of food you should eat daily from each group. And as you can see, the biggest one is vegetables coming next. I'd say it would be grains and fruits, then proteins, and over on the other side is dairy. Um, as you can see, there's no fats, no um, sweets, or anything like that. There's no recommendation for those things. Also, how much of these things you should be consuming is going to change based on three factors, and that's your age, gender, and how much physical activity you have. Alright, so people who are very, very young or very, very old may have to consume fewer calories or fewer um, amounts from these food groups. Uh, men typically have to consume more calories than women and people who are more physically active um, can consume more calories than people who are sedentary or not really doing anything. So what's the most important thing with your eating and your diet is to make sure you have a balanced diet, okay? We have to make sure that we're consuming all of these six nutrient categories or what's in these five food groups because we need the stuff from them to make us the most healthy. Um, what's important to look at when you're thinking about what types of food you want to eat is, is nutrient density. And nutrient density, density is the comparison between the amount of calories something has based on the amount of nutrients it has as well. So if you look at this woman in the picture, she's looking at an orange versus a pizza. Okay, which one has, um, they both have calories, but which one has more nutrients in it? So here's some examples for nutrient density. So an eight ounce glass of milk contains many calories, but it also has a lot of nutrients. On the flip side, a glass of soda has really a lot of calories, but there's absolutely no nutritional value in it whatsoever. We call that empty calories, and we're going to talk about that later. So what's the moral of the story? Milk is more nutrient dense than soda because it has calories and nutrients. So you wanna be looking for foods that are nutrient dense. They contain calories, but they also pack a lot of nutrients as well. Um, the USDA puts out a chart that talks about um, how much calories people should be consuming based on their age, their gender, and how active they are, okay? So if we look over here, uh, a child two to three years of age uh, who is sedentary, sedentary means that they're not doing any physical activity, should be getting about a thousand calories, okay? Versus if they're moderately active, they're, act they're moving more, therefore they can burn more calories so they can consume more, which is a really active child, okay? If we look at females versus males, okay, um, males, especially around here, um, can consume more than females, okay? But as we look at the different age groups, all right, here with females, so, oops, I'll go back here for one second. Um, 
you know, like for me personally, I'm in this category, so uh, I don't think I'm sedentary. I would say I was moderately active. I can have between 2,000 and 2,200 calories. So that basically says that's the type of calories I need um, to ingest to make sure that I stay at my current weight and that I don't gain weight and then I get all the nutrients that I need, okay? Mostly everybody in the class is about male and between here and here, um, if you are moderately active, you can consume between 24 to 2800 calories. Grains, all right? Um, so our first food group is grains. And if we look down at the plate over here, right there, the brown, okay? Um, examples of grains are rolls, breads, pasta, rice cakes, okay? What do they have in them? They have complex carbohydrates. The, the type of carbohydrates that makes you feel full, fuller longer because you have to break them down first before you can even absorb them. We have fiber, that stuff that helps you um, create poop and get waste out of your body. They do have some proteins as well. They contain vitamins and minerals. They are naturally low in fat, which is a good thing. Um, and what you should remember is that you want to choose whole grains. Whole grains contain all of the fiber, the protein, the vitamins, and minerals. You want to make half your grains every day whole grains. Well, what's the difference between that and refined grains? Refined grains are processed grains. And when um, those grains get processed, they actually get stripped or they lose their vitamins, their minerals, their nutrients. Okay? Vegetables, all right? They're your veggies. So you want to get lots of different colors of vegetables because each color is actually indicative of a different type of vitamin or mineral or nutrient that that substance has in it, okay? So vegetables are lettuce, broccoli, spinach, carrots, potatoes. What do they have in them? They do complain, contain complex carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, and minerals, okay? One great thing about vegetables is that they are naturally low in calories. And most vegetables have zero fat in them as well. So trying to fill up on something good would definitely be vegetables. And I know I talked to you guys in class. I'm a chip and dip freak. I love them. Um, but chips are empty calories. You're not getting anything good from them. And dip also isn't very good either. It has lots of saturated fat in it, which contains cholesterol. So how I have, um, you know, given in a little bit is that instead of having chips and dip, I have carrot sticks and dip, okay? Um, I'm still getting a dip, but I'm getting something much more healthy, and I'm getting those nutrients and um, complex carbohydrates and um, minerals and vitamins from the carrots. Fruits, all right, apple, banana, peach, pear, okay? Just like vegetables, fruits contain um, fiber, vitamins, and minerals. Fruits are simple carbohydrates so that they can very quickly be absorbed into your bloodstream. They don't have to be broken down, but they're a good source of simple carbohydrates, unlike cakes or cookie, things like that, um, because they are nutrient dense. Protein. So things like meats, poultry, eggs, beans, peas, nuts, seeds, seafood, okay? They contain complete proteins, so that means that they have those nine essential amino acids. They have B vitamins and they have minerals. And something to remember about protein is that you want to choose lean cuts of protein, so lower fat options. Dairy, okay? So milk, cheese, yogurt, cottage cheese. Um, dairy are products that come from animals. Um, they do have fat-soluble vitamins and calcium, and they also contain complete protein. So again, they have those nine essential amino acids that we cannot make in our body. However, they contain saturated fats. And we know what comes with saturated fats? Cholesterol, okay? So what do we have to do? In order to combat that, and also make sure that we're consuming our dairy because of the good stuff we get from it, we want to choose reduced or low fat options. Oils. Now, if you looked on the plate, oils is not a food group on its own. And we know that oils are unsaturated fats, meaning that they are liquid at room temperature, okay? They are low in cholesterol. They do have essential fatty acids that we can't make in our body and vitamin E, okay? However, there's no recommended um, intake of what you should ingest a day. Just limit them. Um, but I would say if you had to choose between saturated fats and unsaturated fats, definitely go for the unsaturated fats. Empty calories. So this is extras for luxury food. Things like candy, soda, cake, cookies, beef, butter. They're processed foods. They have added sugars and salad fats. They have few nutrients and lots of calories. So they are not nutrient-dense foods, okay? The recommended intake is limited to none. So 
you know, it's okay to have these things once in a while, but you're not going to get anything good from them. And that means that your body is going to be basically crying for the nutrients that it needs. And you are not going to perform um, to the best ability that you can, okay? And I just wanted you to look at the nutrient facts for Mountain Dew. And this is going to kind of preface of uh, our food label, what we're going to be talking about next. But um, if you're looking at this label of Mountain Dew, there's 110 calories per serving. There are 2.5 servings. And if you look here, the only thing that it has is sugars, okay? And these are the not good sugars, so the not good carbohydrates. The so simple carbohydrates that have no nutrients in them whatsoever. So empty calories are things that you want to consume in very small quantities. What goes along with a healthy diet? And that's physical activity. Um, the US Today is recommending that people have at least 60 minutes or more of physical activity per day. And that doesn't mean you have to go out and run 60 minutes or an hour. That means doing anything that you like to do that makes you active. So that's playing soccer, playing basketball, um, even climbing up a flight of stairs, parking your car a little farther away from the mall so that you have to get a few extra steps in. Um, just doing something active is going to be good for your body. And then finally, um, I'm going to make another video about this, but it's called MyFoodopedia.com. Um, it's basically this website where you can put in any type of food that you like to eat and discover the nutrient level, how many calories are in that food, and um, what food groups that it does or doesn't cover. Alright, so that sums up this lesson.